Hackers, researchers, and investigators use powerful OSINT tools to find clues during an investigation. We'll check out the Buscador Virtual Machine, which is full of powerful OSINT tools that allow investigators to track down clues while they perform various searches on the internet, on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. For anybody conducting online investigations, Buscador OS strikes a balance between powerful OSINT tools and privacy-focused options that ensure that you don't get caught while you're investigating someone. Now, this includes browser extensions which do things like modify your outgoing IP address to conceal the agency you're working with, or do things like change your outgoing browser user agent to make sure that you're not leaking the browser and the computer that you're using. Now, aside from this, Buscador OS also includes a number of tools, all the way from Altego to more forensic-focused tools like Eyewitness, which are designed to forensically document web pages related to an investigation. Now, this form factor is super easy to use because you can go ahead and put Buscador OS on a USB stick and run it directly on any computer you have access to. Similarly, you can just install it on your computer's uh, hard drive and just run it like any other operating system. But today, we want to make sure that you can run this on any cross-platform device, so we're going to use VirtualBox, which you can install for free. Once you have that, we can begin. Today, we'll get started using the Buscador Investigative Operating System by downloading the OVA file from the IntelTechniques.com website. Now, here you can see a list of the various tools and features that Buscador has, and you'll also note that it was made by David Westcott and Mike Bazell. Now, this is extensively documented in the book Intel Techniques, um, so if you want to check that out further, there's a lot there. But first, you'll go ahead and download the OBA file, and you'll go ahead and import that into VirtualBox. Now, the way that you do this is by going to File and then Import Appliance within VirtualBox. And from there, you'll go ahead and navigate to the OVA file that you downloaded. Now, I've already done that here, but let's go into some of the configuration options before, oops, before I start. And I'm going to power off the machine. And we'll need to make sure that we have a couple things set up before we begin. Now, first and most obvious under the settings is naming it. So let's pick a name that we will be able to remember. And then you'll want to type uh, to set the type to Linux and the version to Ubuntu 64-bit. Now, under Advanced, go ahead and set the clipboard to bidirectional, and that will allow you to be able to go back and forth with information you're taking from the guest and the host system, which is really useful because otherwise you might have to do some, some fancy stuff like putting it on a USB drive or something that's a little bit obnoxious. So next, let's, let's go to System. And here, let's make sure to set the base memory as high as you can so that we have some uh, memory available for us to be able to work with. And you'll also want to make sure that that is at least 124 megabytes. Um, so actually, so actually that, that limit for 124 megabytes, let's set that for the video memory here. So that means we'll be able to do things like render YouTube videos or other things that might pertain to an investigation. Uh, so we'll need to make sure to set that to at least 128 megabytes. And back on the system, set the base memory to, again, whatever you can afford, but I'm going to set, set it relatively high. Now for the processor, you can go ahead and give it as many CPUs as you have the ability to. And then under storage over here, you can go ahead and click on add optical drive which I've already done here. Next, we'll go to the shared folders. And in order to make sure that we can drop things that we find in Buscador OS, we'll need to specify which folder we want to set up to work under both the guest and the host operating system. Now, make sure to uh, set it to auto mount and do not select read only because you won't be able to add things to it. And then click OK. Now, that should be everything we need. So by clicking all right, OK at the bottom, we'll be able to start the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and start it here. And when it boots up, the default username and password are both OSINT. This will boot to the Buscador desktop. And you can see here 
that we have a number of different applications installed on the left side. We can see we have a couple of different browsers, and then if we click on the Show Applications icon, we can see a list of the more complete library of installed applications. So first, let's take a look at an OSINT tool, and then we'll take a look at a forensic tool included with Buscador OS. Now to begin, we're going to use Metagoofle. Now we're going to target Priceline, and the reason we're going to do that is because they left me stranded in Nevada during DEF CON. So what Metagoofle does is automate a lot of document collection. So it'll scan the URL that you provide, and then based on the PDF files or other public documents that the company has made available, it'll scrape metadata to determine things like employees that work there who work on those sorts of documents if you're looking to either forge a document or maybe looking for a list of different people to fish at that company. Now you can set the different number of documents you want to pull, and we'll only pick 10 to keep it a little bit short, but what this tool will do is go and fetch a bunch of PDF files from that domain and then display them in two different folders. One is the full uh, actual files, and then the second is the result of the metadata pull from that, those files that have been discovered. Once it's done scanning, you'll see we have two folders. When we open the first, you can see a list of different PDF files that we have found from the domain. Going back to the main folder, you can also see the results.priceline.com folder. Now, this includes the interpreted results, which includes a list of authors. Now, we know that this is a list of people that has worked on Priceline stuff, so if we wanted to go after someone in particular at a company, or you wanted to counterfeit something, this would be valuable information. We can also close out and go ahead and look at another tool that is interesting for its ability to forensically capture a website. This is Eyewitness. Now, Eyewitness can either use a single or multiple URLs in order to pull down information about a domain. Now, what we'll do is capture a screenshot as well as pull information from the header and other HTML elements to determine additional information about our target. Now, to do this, we'll just use nullbyte.wonderhowto.com. This is useful to pull down a lot of information about websites that you might want to include in your investigation and preserve a kind of snapshot of what they look like right now. As you can see, it generates a folder, and when we open it, it should contain a lot of information about the website, including a report. Now, when we open this report in a browser, we'll see useful information, including a full snapshot of what it looks like in this moment. Here we can see the web screenshot, and then the information that we've pulled from the header, such as the page title, the content length, other information like the uh, strict transportation security, uh, the set cookie, and other useful data. So we can click on the web screenshot to go ahead and look at the full snapshot it's taken, and you can see it scrolls all the way through the website, which makes it a lot more easy than trying to do this yourself for every website you want to preserve. Now here in Firefox, you can also see that there's a number of browser extensions. And these are also really useful, aside from the OSINT tool that we covered. Now you can see that there are a couple like Fireshot and Nimbus Capture, which make it easy to preserve websites in the same way, some preserving some additional information in a PDF format. Now if you have other types of data you want to download, such as media like video, a video download helper and a couple of these other browser extensions in Chrome are also very useful. Now, aside from being able to take a snapshot of the way a page looks now, we can also go back and look at prior states of a web page with the Resurrect Pages extension. When we click on it, we'll have a list of options of places we can look to see if this website has been preserved in the past, which for an investigator is extremely useful if somebody has modified their website to remove information that you want to find. Now, if we open up Chrome, we can also see there are a number of other browser extensions that are useful. In particular, you can see that this one here, Wappalizer, has the ability to break down a website and see the technology that it's built on. This combined with other screen capture tools makes it easy to use a browser to conduct an investigation in Buscador. As you can see from this example, the browser extensions are a critical part of conducting an investigation. And aside from them, 
Buscador combines a number of different powerful OSINT tools in a way that's easy to understand and use. If you're a beginner, I highly recommend you check out some of the powerful tools installed, some of which we have extensive write-ups for on Nullbyte. As you can see from the amount of tools included in the Buscador virtual machine, it's a powerful platform for anyone relying on OSINT to pursue online investigations. If you're interested in learning more OSINT techniques, you can check out the book Open Source Intelligent Techniques by Mike Basil, who's the creator of the Buscador virtual machine. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts on the show, make sure to send me a message on Twitter linked in the description. We'll see you next time.